What's up guys and welcome back to another video. So the big question everyone is asking themselves is what's better between copper and PEX? There's a lot of debate between the old school plumbers and the newer generation ones on which is best between both. And in this video, I'll be talking about the pricing, ease of installation, performance and lifespan of both of these types of pipes so you could better choose what's best for you and your particular application. Personally, I really enjoy working with both as they each have their strengths and shortcomings. At the end of this video, I'll tell you which one I prefer using as I worked a lot with both of them. The first thing I want to talk about is pricing. We all know how copper is pricey and it's no different when it comes to piping. Per linear foot, copper costs about a buck fifty compared to PEX which is only about 50 cents per linear foot, making PEX a very affordable solution. Also, if we look at the historical chart for copper, it basically skyrocketed between 2005 and 2006 at $4.58 US a pound and is nowhere near going down in value, which is why PEX is a more cost-effective solution for the future. Also, the fact that PEX requires less fittings and that the connections are quicker to learn and make, the overall cost in labor and materials is less at the end of the day. As for tooling and materials, soldering costs more for the simple fact that there's consumables like flux, solder and gas. And lastly, PEX doesn't carry the theft concerns that copper does, requiring no replacement fees if it's stolen. So for costs, PEX wins by a long shot. The next aspect is the ease of installation. There's no doubt about it that PEX is the easier to install. First of all, PEX requires less tools and materials to make a joint than a solder joint does, as we could see here. It's also a lot quicker and there's virtually no preparation needed as opposed to copper where it needs to be sanded, fluxed and deburred before soldering and cleaned after soldering. One big advantage that PEX has over copper is the fact that it's flexible. When running pipes through joists for example, the fact that copper can't be bent makes it impossible to pass a full length of pipe, which means it needs to be cut and coupled every foot or so to get in. With PEX, this problem is non-existent. In terms of how both perform, if we look at the inside of both fittings, we could see that the opening on the copper fitting is much bigger than the one on the PEX fitting. So what does this mean? The issue here is less flow. The easiest way to understand how it has a negative impact is let's say you have three toilets that require two gallons per minute and you had a three quarter inch PEX line that could only supply five gallons per minute. The toilets would take more time to fill up. Copper fittings on the other hand don't have this problem as they're full port and could supply more water. So copper gets a point here on this one. Next is the lifespan. The lifespan between both is pretty similar at around 50 years give or take. But many factors will alter this such as the type of water coming in the building, the installation and the amount of usage the system gets. I'd have to give this one to PEX as copper will eventually pit, corrode, scale or even burst in freezing temperatures while PEX won't. A good example of an improper installation is not deburring the pipe after it's been cut as seen here. The turbulence created by the lip causes erosion and eats away at the pipe, leading to a pinhole. Another important aspect is repairs. Both of these systems will eventually need repairs or modifications on them and I find that working with PEX is a lot more convenient because the fittings could be rotated and installed wet. Repairing a leak on copper could get costly as if there's a slightest amount of water left in the pipe, it cannot be soldered. So some measures need to be taken which are very time consuming. Also, when working in commercial buildings, a hot work permit as such is needed to be able to use a torch, which requires once again, more time and more costs. Now, I've been giving a lot of points to PEX since before, so for you guys not to think that I'm biased towards it, let's talk about why copper's so awesome. Copper is biostatic. 
meaning it has an antimicrobial feature that makes it a lot harder for bacteria to grow on. The best example is on some boats and ships. The hull is covered in copper sheathing to prevent barnacles and algae from growing on it. Copper is 100% recyclable and PEX isn't. Even though PEX is plastic, because it's been cross-linked, the cross-linking cannot be undone and reused as piping. Instead, it could be used as an extender to make other plastic products such as totes and bins. So its sustainability isn't as great as copper. Copper isn't impermeable or porous like PEX is. If for example you have some gasoline fall on PEX pipe, it would eventually get leached into the water because the plastic is porous. Copper is permeable and does not have this problem. Copper is resistant to rodent menaces. If your property is prone to having mice or rats, PEX is not a good option. Here's an example of a piece of PEX that caused a huge water damage in a home just because they sharpened their teeth on the pipe. Copper is not vulnerable to rodents, so that would never happen. And lastly, copper can withstand way higher pressure ratings than PEX, so they both have their uses. So what does it boil down to for me and what do I prefer? I prefer PEX for everyday use. Why? Because I like the ease of use, speed, reliability and the cost of the system over copper piping. Simple and plain. And in the comments section, I'd like to hear what you guys prefer. Copper or PEX? And what do you use them for? If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it, and subscribe for more. And until the next one, thanks for watching.